What's going on, peoples? Al York Sports with another one. TGI Friday. You already know what it is. Last show of the year. Most likely, unless I do something before Sunday, which I don't think that's going to happen. But, um, yeah, man. God damn it. JK in the building. Happy New Year. God bless you and the family. You know what it is. Douglas Ben in the building. I see you, baby. I see you, Douglas. Yeah, everybody tapping in. Happy New Year. That's to be the only thing that should be coming out my mouth early is wishing all y'all people Happy New Year, man. My man Venom, man. Much love, baby. Elias Soldier. Venom, that's my guy right there, man. Yeah, I appreciate everybody, man. I see Loka in the building. Happy New Year. Everybody got to get the Happy New Year before I do a motherfucking thing in here, man. Real talk. <laughs> Look, I already at it. Calling everybody to show off. Yeah, man, TGI Friday, man. I hope everybody having fun. You know, last couple days of the year, 2023 is out the window. Now we doing 2024. And uh, hopefully everybody gets, you know, what they want in life. Steve Levine in the building. I know Steve wants the Sixers and the Eagles to win. That's what he wants. Benny Bellato, a.k.a. Sinbat, Happy New Year. I got to let all y'all know Happy New Year. If I don't, I'm not doing my job. And you know that's not me not to do my job, man. Continue to know drinking and driving. Y'all know what it is, especially... At this time of the year, you know, this time of the year, it, 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 you got drunk dudes out there. You don't even want to be out there driving to keep it 100 because another motherfucker could kill you. You understand what I'm saying? But you got to take a risk sometimes. But life is a risk, man. Okay, so I'm just letting the people pour in. I'm just making sure I get the happy New Year's out there so that y'all can never say I never wish y'all a happy New Year. Okay, let me get ready here real quick. Hold up. Okay, I got my track ready. Let me go to the message of the day. Once again, Happy New Year to everybody. Whoever tuning in late, Happy New Year to y'all too. All right, let me start the message of the day. Then we're going to start this marvelous show. We got a lot of stuff for y'all uh, being the last Friday of the New Year. Like I said, first things first. Happy New Year to everybody once again. Brian Reynolds, I see you, baby. Salute, OG. Happy New Year. This is my message of the day. I, I, I kind of put it with the New Year. Uh, normally, I just come out with the message of the day, but I have to have something that can relate to the New Year. So what I want to tell y'all is show your loved ones more love and stop chasing the people who don't give a flying fuck about you. I want you to rewind that. The people you got in front of you that always show you love, you know they got your back, you know they love you, let's stop taking those people for granted. That's our problem. It, it's, it's like an ego thing. We know we got them on smash, so we trying to get others on smash. And that's the wrong idea because in reality... Love the people that are loving you and love them harder because they're the only ones that's going to show face when shit hits the fan. Remember that. When shit hits the fan, they're the only ones that's going to show face. Let's start the show, baby. Al, your sports. Friday, baby, happy new year, baby. Y'all know what the fuck it is. We got the games on. I'm in the crib with a meal. Got my drink ready for later. I'm partying home tonight. How you like that? While all y'all going out, I'm partying home, man. Yes, sir. Happy new year, man. That's what it is, man. It's gonna be a great show. Mark Hillary in the building. X Man in the building. We're gonna drop knowledge, facts. Gonna go into Russell Wilson, all that shit. Be blocking the building. I see you, baby. Don't be mad. The Niners went down. They gonna make noise in the playoffs, though. But my man Lamar Jackson put them niggas on vote, man. He 
put them on woke, and you know that, my dude. Give, give the Mars props. All right, let's start this show, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to start off with sad news. Yeah, yeah, we got Tiffany in the building. God bless you. Happy New Year. All right, we're going to start off with sad news. Uh, Ryan Miner of uh, the Baltimore o uh, Orioles, the infielder who took part in history when Cal Ripken Jr. broke the record for consecutive games. Ryan Miner was the guy who sucked the two to him that day. That's a good trivial question because I will not got this right until I read up on it. So basically I'm bringing Ryan Miner up because he just died recently. Uh, he was just 49 years old. But he had a moment in his life that even while he's asleep, it's gonna it, it, it's gonna be with him doing sleeping. It was with him while he was alive. He came in for the baseball player that broke the record for most consecutive games played, which was Kyle Ripken. And he he just went in for him and, and, and he's a trivial question. He's one of a kind for being the only guy to be able to substitute. Mr. Cal Ripken Jr. All right, let's go to other news. X Man, I see you. Uh, Shohei Otani. You got to give this guy some props. I know he got money. I get it. But my understanding, Joe Kelly wears the number seventeen for the L.A. Dodgers. But this is what's funny. Joe Kelly's a free agent, but Otani didn't give a fuck. Otani was like, you know. Joe Kelly gave him his number, whether he's going to resign or not. Jose Soto in the building. I see you, big dog. He bought his wife a porch. I mean, uh, I think it was like a what, 2024 Porsche for just letting him get his number 17. And like I said, Joe Kelly's a free agent. This dude could just bounce. And it didn't matter. 17 would have been his regardless. But Otani is so classy. It didn't even matter if Joe Kelly was leaving. Just the fact that Kelly said, yo, you can wear my 17 number because I know that was your number with the Angels. He bought him a Porsche 2023 for his wifey. You got a salute on time. That's some class for your ass. Other news. The Toronto Blue Jays and center fielder Kevin Kiermaier have agreed on a one-year deal worth 10.5 M's. Kiermaier, 265, 8 home run, 36 RBI. A great defensive center fielder. He can run. He's hitting lower for average. He don't have to pop in his bat. But this is a good signing for the Jays for just for one year. Other news. Chicago White Sox have agreed with terms with catcher Martin Maldonado that played with the Houston Astros. Uh, Maldonado's 37 years old. I never knew he was up there in age. He only hit 191, 15 home run, 36 RBI. But he will control that pitching staff. Maldonado can, you know, call a game and has a good arm. He's known for his defensive presence, not his offensive presence. And uh, he replaces Yamani Guando behind the plate. Other news. Catcher Mitch Garver and the Seattle uh, Mariners. I was going to say Seattle. Mariners agree on a two-year, $24 million contract. Garver was part-time last year with the Texas Rangers that won a championship Hit 270, 19 home runs, 50 RBIs. Seattle slowly but surely are trying to get, you know, people, you know, stack up their lineup. But they're not getting the marquee names that the Rangers got with Simeon and Seagull. They're getting mediocre names. You know what I'm saying? They got to get some marquee names if they really want to make a run. And last but not least, left-handed pitcher Yuki Matsui and the San Diego Projects reached a five-year deal worth $28 million. Uh, this guy's nice. He's 28 years old, had 236 saves, 2.40, and over 659 to the third inning, striking out 860, walking 295. He's going to replace Hader. Hader wants 100 M's. He already said it. And the Padres cannot continue to throw these bags out there. They got a bunch of bags. They just got rid of Soto's contract. So now they're trying to trim down. You know, not re-signing Hater and signing this guy for 28 M's. And this guy was nice in Japan, but the United States is a different brand of baseball. We all know that. Salute to everybody tapping in. Much appreciated. Mark Guillory, if you in the building, let's go. 
I ain't see him tap in, but you know, that's not to say he ain't tapped in. Give me a minute, guys. Hey, look at D Block. I see you, D Block. That was a great game, man. Mark Guillory, if you're not in the building, I'm going to call X-Man in. And my have you come second. I cannot have my people wait. Let me see if I can call him in. If not, I might have to call the X-Man. Mark Guillory, last call, Mark Guillory. X-Man, come on. He's going to have to go second. That's my guy, but he's going to have to go second. All right, here we go. After X now. X man, what up? What's up, brother? What's going hold on? Hold up, baby. Yo, you look like nine and day. Last week, <laughs> you look like the wolf man. And now you butt naked in the face. What's going on, baby? God damn, you look different. Uh, you well, uh, this is, is X man? I, 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 I'm tired of hearing the complaints, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get right into it, X Man. The Duck Dynasty look isn't looking too good right now. <laughs> got you, got you. Let's get right into it. We got a lot let's of hungry sports fans. Hold on, let me lift this up a little bit. There we go, so I can see myself a little better. Let's go right into the NFL. Big, big move in Denver where Sean Payton benched the $246 million man in Russell Wilson who had a decent year with numbers, by the way. Yeah. I mean, when you look at his numbers, 26 touchdown, eight picks, 3,000 yards. But when I watched them, the numbers didn't compare to what I was watching. So what I'm saying is he had a lot of check downs, a lot of yak, which means yards after the catch. Yeah. And he's not the Russell Wilson that we've seen in Seattle. That's a fact. No, he's not. And it's fucked up because they gave him 246 guarantee. They traded three number ones and got their two two now players, no in font and somebody else. And this been like true lock. This is like yeah, and lock. There you go. Who's also decent. Yeah. This is like one of the worst trades is going down ever. X if, if Russia don't win them a chip or something. So I want you to take on the benching and and if you feel it was necessary. Um, well, this day has been coming since the day they hired Sean Payton, because we all know Sean Payton didn't want him as his quarterback to begin with. This is going to go down as easily one of the worst trades ever. Regardless, they're not winning a championship this year. They're not making the playoffs. He's getting released before March of next year, before his contract becomes guaranteed for $37 million for next year. So he's gone. Sean Payton didn't want him as quarterback. We know that, but because he had them in contention for a playoff, he kept them as his starter. He's been wanting to bench him for the longest time. And that that gave him, when he refused to re restructure his contract at the end of October, that set in motion everything that we see now. Yeah, what I, what I heard was the brass approached at him. Yeah and said, we want you to defer 37 M's. Now, I wasn't there. This is something I read up on. So this ain't the raw truth. This is something I read up on. Yeah. It sounds unlike Russell, who already got money, not to defer money when he already got money, unless him and his wife know they've been treating him like shit, and his wife is the one telling him, you better not do that. Because that looked like yeah. something that the wife answer the bell to that right there i mean i won't be surprised i won't be surprised but ever since ever since sean payton came in there's been you know ever since they announced sean payton as the head coach there's been a little friction between them and stuff and, and that boiled over a few weeks ago when they got into that sideline uh shouting match i guess i think that was the uh the seattle game was it i think it was or, or something like that that wasn't no shouting match that was a dog barking at a human. Like, that was a shouting match is when it's going back and forth. He was barking at Russell. And let me tell you something. How long has Sean Payton and Russell been together? 
basically what ten weeks. Uh, so what, what? When did they hire? They hired him. Uh, this year, well, remember right? they, 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 yeah, they, tra they, they traded. Remember, he was on the contract by New Orleans, so they had to trade for him. Right, so right. They traded for him. I think it was back in. Uh, I believe it was right around, right after a couple months or a month or so after the Super Bowl. The point like I'm that. trying to, the point I'm trying to make, is that he been with Drew Brees for over 10, 12 fucking years. Yeah. Ain't yeah. never balked at Drew Brees like that. No. And you would no. a Super Bowl winner, a dude with a second bag, a dude that got mad respect, and he balked at him like he stole something, X. Yeah, My man, I that, that, that watched it again. Yeah. Because I was confused. Like people were telling me he was getting in his neck. So I pulled it up on YouTube where they kind of went right on them. Not the game, and you can see it right on them. And yeah. yo, it was ugly, dog. The no, way he got, spoke to him, got, I don't even fast. think that shit could be sal salvage. That's how bad it got. Yeah, well, uh, I think after last year, being that there were, remember last year, he had a lot of teammates that didn't want Russell Wilson there. They said he was a terrible teammate. He had his own thing going on over there. So you had a lot of bad, bad taste already left over from last year. Sean Payne coming in, saying the stuff. He said in the off season about Russell Wilson with his personal trainers and stuff like that, and I think that, you know I I think uh, it, it soured fast. Yeah, I mean he before they met the rules, to He told him yeah. you gotta lose weight. All yeah. that your, your girl coming to the field, all that your wife, whatever you want to call her, that's not happening. Well, remember he also had his own private quarterbacks coach. He didn't want to uh, he didn't want to uh, uh, deal with the coaching staff they had. So he had his own private trainer, his own. Private, private uh, jet quarterbacks coach private jet everything Sean Payton cut all that shit out and I think uh, I I think it left a bad taste with Russell Wilson yeah it hit him different it hit him yeah. different because you know he Pete Carroll is a friendly coach yeah he's a he's a Sean players Payton coach, ain't, yeah. ain't no motherfucking players no. coach Sean Payton is he want to win yeah by all yeah. means necessary Sean yeah. Payton is from the Bill Parcells school yeah he a is. lot of y'all that don't know that yeah, he Parcells, he said, if you look at Peyton real good, he looked like Parcells in the face, bro. <laughs> a I'm little telling bit, telling yeah. you, he, he so much want to be Parcells. <laughs> look at his face real good. You see a lot of Parcells yeah. in that motherfucker. That's because he want to be like him so motherfucking bad. And Parcells, no, everybody know he's one of the greatest. Yeah, he is. Uh, listen, Parcells is one the of Everybody knows he's the greatest. He's that. the only guy. Yeah that I've seen scream at the best football player on the team a couple times, which was Lawrence Taylor. Yeah. He never he, separated, yeah. and that's for Sean Payton, by benching Russell, the highest paid, the diva, the supposed to be the best player on Denver, the way he screamed yeah. on him, that sends a message throughout the whole fucking locker room. Yeah, motherfucker, no, yo, this motherfucker not playing. It does, it does. It sends a big message. Listen, I didn't think... He deserved to get benched. I understand why they did it. I think it was bullshit. I think you let him finish the season. He's having a good year. And remember, man, that team still needs a lot of fixing. They've only, besides Sutton, they, they don't have a lot of great receivers. Judy, Judy, Jerry Judy looks like a bust. They don't have no, great, Ju great Judy's all right. Line. He's not what they expected. Yeah. Cortland Sutton is nice. Cortland Sutton is good. But He's that's nice. the only real dependable player they have. You know, they, they need a running back. They, 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 need, they need running backs. They need an offensive line. So you can't put all the blame on Russell Wilson when they still need a lot, a lot of help on offense. The defense, since dropping, since getting 70 dropped on them by Miami, the defense has been better. No, the defense give played. Them that. But Russell, this is the problem. He's not, he's not completing the plays that they call an out for him. Yeah, that's why he took him out. Yeah. That interception in, and in, against the Texans late off the wrong foot, just yeah. threw a fucking alley oop on third down. You can't do that. You know, Russell was out there looking like a fucking yeah. rookie a lot of times. So you know what? Let's not overkill. Let's move on. Russell Wilson's bench, and he might not be with the Denver Broncos next year. Uh, that's he, a fact. He, he won't. He won't. They're gonna release him. Okay, let's go real quick. Let's slide up to the NBA. Uh, your NBA five best teams and why? Let's start off with the four, with the fifth best down to one. We'll both go one each. Let's go quick because you're gonna do the NFL uh, 
you gonna do the games of the week with me? Because it looked like uh, Mark Guillory got caught up or something. Okay, no problem. Maybe be in a Christmas party or, or New Year's Eve party. He's, 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 still, he's still celebrating, bro. He's yeah, still celebrating. yeah. Who, who knows? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go. Let's do this. Okay, you want me to start first? Uh, you want to start first? I, I, you know, I, I'll start it. I'll start it. At number five, at number five, I think I, I, I got the Philadelphia 76ers. I think, you know, Joel Embiid is a beast, man. He, he's dominating every, every night. Uh, Tyrese Max, he's very is a good player. Tobias Harris having a good year, but I still think they need to make a trade for that one other superstar that's going to take all the pressure. Yeah. Well, not all the pressure, but some of the pressure. Somebody like Embiid. a Zach Levine yeah, type. Like, exactly. Somebody's going to take the pressure off of uh, off, uh, MB when he has an off night. So, I, I, number five, I got Philly. Okay. Uh, I agree with you. Um, they also need some shooters off the bench like they had back in the days yeah. when they had Ia Sova. And then they had a, a not J.J. Reddick. J.J. Reddick actually started. They had another guy that played in San Antonio for a lot of years. Just like these journeymen yeah. that can hit jump shots. Yeah. They don't really have that. They got to get that. Yeah. My fifth team is the Minnesota Timberwolves. I know record-wise they got like the, maybe the second, third best record. But I don't go by record. I go who I think is going to make the most noise. And the Timberwolves are up and coming. Edwards is looking more and more like a yeah. fucking beast. You got Gobert playing that defense. You got Towns doing a little both. I like Reed. Reed, a lot of people be sleeping on no. Reed. And, nice Reed yeah. and McDaniels is nice also. I think this is a team that if they keep this group together, they can make a lot of noise in the future. I hope they don't do what happened with the big, <sighs> big ticket in Marbury where they end up breaking them up. Yeah, me keep too. I hope this, not Do either. whatever you need to do to keep this unit together. How you do it? You don't wait till they free agency year. You tie them up right now. Right now, yeah. Like a lot of good yeah. baseball teams do. They lock them up early, get them that money, so it's not an issue later on. Right? And that's your Braves are good for that. Number four for me is going to be the Denver Nuggets. They struggled a bit, but I, you know, I, I still think that they're, they're, I still think at the end of the day they're going to be the best team in the West. I still, I still think they're going to come out in uh out of the West in the finals, Joe Kicks having another MVP caliber year. Jamal Murray looks like he's healthy from uh from the hamstring. Um, like I said, they struggled a bit defensively lately. Um, but I, I, they're still uh, they're still in my top four. As far as I know, they're still the you know they're still one of the top teams. They're still the defending champs. So they haven't struggled that much for me to take them out of the top five. Oh, that's 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 what I. If you'd have done that, I would. I would have hanged up this whole conversation. We're not yeah. talking about this. <laughs> okay, at four, I got the Philadelphia 76ers. Okay. Like you said, you hit it on the nose where they mentioned that one marquee player. I don't think they could get through in the East, Milwaukee and Boston with that shortage of one man where Tobias Harris was supposed to be that guy, but we all know he never amounted to that guy. He's just yeah. a nice piece to have. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's a good role player. Yeah, yeah, but they... They need a solid guy. You know, Maxi is barely that top three guy because he's still yeah. very much young. But if you could get, a, like I said, a Levine, a DeRozan, somebody of that caliber, now you're talking in Philadelphia. That's my fourth. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, at, 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 number, at number three, I got the Milwaukee Bucks. I think they're still trying to figure it out. Defensively, they took a big hit by trading Jeru Holiday. Facts. They're one of the they're one of the bottom half of the defensive teams, but offensively, you know, Giannis and, and Lillard, they're still figuring it out. And I think once they do, they're going to be very dangerous. So at number three, I got Milwaukee. Okay, that's where me and you are, are equivalent at. I got Milwaukee at three. Drew Holiday is one of the best defenders in the NBA. Yeah, only guy that really moves his feet. You don't really see him reaching. He's always moving his feet. And he plays defense the old-fashioned way. My man Anderson Hunt was the one that told me about that. He goes, Al, how do you judge a great defender? And I said, a guy that constantly is on his guy, he said, no, is you move your feet to the spot before he hits the spot. Yeah, exactly. You understand yeah. me? See, I when you yeah, a ball player, he knew more than me because, you know, he took it all away. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I only know the little kid shit, yeah. So when he broke that down to me, you got to move your feet. When you beat the guy to the spot, you create the charge. You create where he can't go through you. But if you 
I agree. Always trailing the guy. Yeah. That's when then you set yourself up for the worst. So saying that Milwaukee lost huge defensively, but adding D dollars gives them more points. So yeah. I guess they figured they wanted more scoring, less defense. And me and you know the old fashioned saying, yeah. defense wins championships. Wins championships. I agree so with you. So we're gonna go, let's I go to number two. At number two, I, I I take Minnesota. Their record is what it is. I mean, Anthony Edwards is a superstar, man. I, I don't want to hear nobody. Anthony Edwards is a superstar. Carl Anthony I want to Towns. see it in the playoffs. I, I, I agree with you, but right now. I want to see it in the play. Like Lamar Jackson. Yeah. Lamar Jackson is a superstar, but I want to see it in the playoffs. No, I, I do too. But I think right now the way they're playing, I think they're the second best team in the league. Carl Anthony Towns is having a, a tremendous year. We all know, you know, uh, Anthony Edwards. I, you named them before. Nas Reed. Excellent, yep. excellent young player. Great role I mean, player. Rudy I didn't Gobert even, I didn't even the mention defense. Conley. Conley's a yeah. great veteran Conley, over there. Yeah, Conley's having that, that great veteran presence. So I, I got Minnesota, too. I think they can match points for points with somebody with, with, with them. And I think defensively, they're, they're, they're solid defensively. Okay. Uh, I already spoke my piece. So yeah. I'm going to go to my number two. My number two is the champion, Devin Nuggets. Until you knock them out the way. Okay. Um, it's been proven when they got their whole unit out there, they can beat anybody. Yeah. Now, they took they a download loss that a lot of people not talking about, but I'm going to talk about it. Losing Bruce Brown was big. Brown is big off yeah. the bench. What he's doing in Indiana, the guy yeah. is instant offense. Now, I understand they got a, a, a Reggie Jackson over there, but he's not Bruce, yeah. Bruce Brown. He's not Bruce Brown, no. no. You understand what I'm saying? So that's where they lack him. But as far as they start in five, Murray's going to continue to get healthier and better. Porter Jr. is going to continue. Yeah. Porter Jr. is going to continue to get better. Gordon just has to be Gordon, and the joke is the best in the game. Whether yeah. he wins MVP or not, he does more for his teammates than anybody. Than anybody on does. The court. Yeah, so I they're agree. my number two. Go to number one. Then we're gonna well, flip out the football. I think we. I think we both agree with number one. That's the Boston Celtics. Facts. Defensively, offensively, Jason Tatum is a superstar. Jalen Brown is right there. Jeru Holiday brings extra toughness to that to that team defensively. Paul Zingas is having a great everybody everybody talks about their stars, but they forget Christos Porzingis is having a great year for them. And yeah, he, he's, he's a he's great going, he, he don't have to do much. He just gotta hit the open shots, get the rebound. So they're making it real easy yeah. for him. Doesn't yeah, have to do much. These guys are creators. Brown's a creator. Holiday's a creator. Tatum's a creator. So they kick it out to him. You remember, he, Paul yeah. Zingas hit them threes at the garden. Yeah. He can hit the open three. Yeah, yeah. Dude, and the, I, elbow, I agree. the elbow from the foul line is cash. So all you got to do is stay healthy. And I like him out there with Al Horford. It gives him some height. Because yeah, like I, height. I do too. I, I think uh, what, what what's hurting them right now is they don't have a strong bench. You know, uh, Derek Wright is a good player off the bench, but he's starting now. Right. But, you know, I, I think uh, I think what hurts them is the bench. I think if they get one more player that can be instant offense or defense off the bench, I, I think they'll be I think they'll be a lot better. So Boston right now is my number one team. I mean, they're proving it night in and night out. Even though the game against Detroit, they went into overtime, but you know it's Detroit. They still won. They, 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 they still won. You know, yeah, they it, didn't it, really show. It, I see the game. So they were Detroit, playing laser so. that first half. They were down <laughs> yeah. twenty. Yeah. yeah, they turned it up. But they got bench guys. They're trying to like yeah. build, like Pritchard. They build in. There's a couple other guys coming off the bench. I think something. I think his name is Brown or Jackson. I forgot his name. He was in the game a lot yesterday. But yeah. you're right. If they get an established, a couple established bench players, that's all they really need. Remember, they yeah, got their exactly. heart broken a couple times. Losing yeah. to Milwaukee, losing the chip to Golden State. So right now, they got their heart broken. They got the talent. I can see the Celtics and the next three, four chips either visiting it or, yeah. or down in the conference finals. And, and here's the thing. They had the core of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown now for almost a, 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 for almost a decade. It's about time they take that next step and win that championship. Right. Uh, uh, my, my knock on Tatum, he don't have enough dog in him. He, he's, trying to develop, he's trying to develop a dog, both of them. I mean, Brown got a little more dog, but they're trying to de develop it. But that's something you kind of have to have it already. Already, yeah, I agree. 
But you know, but if they either like LeBron, LeBron to me ain't a dog, but LeBron got flashes of a dog. So if yeah. they could give flashes of a dog, you know, together, that might that might do it. But none of them have yeah. got that Kobe, that Jordan, no, they don't, no, that they Iverson. Don't. None they of them don't. got no. that in them. None of them. Not even that Charles Barkley or Carl Malone type attitude. They don't facts, have that. Facts, facts. Okay, so that. good work on your top five. Now let's go to the NFL games of the week. Uh, I th I'm throwing you off right now because you don't know what the teams I got. So you're going to kind of have to do what I do, and that's freestyle. Okay. Okay. Let's do Mark this. Guillory, I develop with, uh, when I, I break it down with him. He does his little homework, but we're just yeah. going to shoot. All right? <laughs> okay, ready? let's shoot. Let's do this. Let's go. All right, we're going to Irvin, Texas. Saturday night football okay. game. Let's do the this. The 11-4 and four Detroit Lions versus the 10-5 and five Dallas Cowboys. The line is minus five and a half for my Cowboys. Talk to us. Cowboys undefeated at home, man. That, 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 the, the Cowboys are so undependable, man. They play great at home, and then they go on the road. They, they, they shit the bed. This is going to be a high-scoring game, you know, two explosive offenses. I think the Cowboys' defense shows up here. I, I think they're going to get in that backfield, get to Jared Goff. Um, I, I, I think uh, Dak Prescott, I didn't think he had a bad game last week against Miami. I just... I think they slowed down C.D. Lamb after he had that big game. Right. After he had that big uh, first quarter against Miami. Uh, they, they need to get a run game together with Tony Pollard, man. That, that, that run game, I think they really do miss Ezekiel Elliott back there with Tony Pollard. So, uh, I, I, but this one, I'm going to take the Cowboys because they're a better team at home. They play better at home. I don't think you're going to see the mistakes they made against, uh, 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 against Miami on the road. So I, I I like the I like the I like the uh, I like the Cowboys here. You like them to cover the five and a half or just to win the game? I, I, I like the Cowboys. I think I think they'll cover. Okay. Um, great point on Miami. Dak Prescott didn't lose the game. I just no. don't think he won the game. No. Now he did throw a touchdown late for the lead. That should have been yeah. good enough, but the defense didn't hold him. Miami yeah, this went defense, downfield. This defense is up and down. Yeah, Miami went downfield and, you know, got the winning field goal, whatever, and they, they beat us by two points. Uh, but in this game here, I think the Cowboys find a way. Um, it's not a free play I got. I don't like the number five and a half, but I'm pretty okay. sure that the Cowboys will take care of business and win the game. Okay. All right, let's go to the next game. We're going to Tampa Bay, the 7-8 and eight New Orleans Saints versus the 8-7 and seven Tampa Bay Bucks. The line is minus two and a half for big money in the Buccaneers, talk to me. They're in Tampa, right? Yeah, this is this 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 division sucks. This NFC South, man, this is <laughs> terrible, man. Unbelievable that a team with nine wins is going to get in and host a and host a and host a playoff game. Uh, listen, I I I, I, I want to take New Orleans, but I just can't because that offense is so unpredictable and stuff. Right. I, I think Tampa Bay with the running game of White. And, and you know, quietly, Mike Mike Evans and and, and Baker Mayfield have a great rapport together. Oh, you know, tearing it up. They're, and, and, they're tearing it up. And Mike Evans quietly is having a, a great year. Godwin, uh, Godwin season. is out there too, tearing and, that and, shit and, God, and Godwin's having a good year. But I, I like I like Tampa. I think their offense is, is, is more is more consistent than. Uh, then the Saints, you know, the Saints defense is top notch, but but the, I I don't trust their offense. So I like, I think the I think the Buccaneers pull this out. Okay, uh, this is a funny game. If I would have drew up the line. The last two games I've seen the Buccaneers play, pure domination of the Packers at Lambeau Field, and then last week they took care of business of the Jacksonville Jaguars, smoked them. Yeah, smoked them. Yeah. Saints been playing suspect of late. This line should have Very been at suspect. least three and a half, four points at home. I don't care if it's a divisional yeah. game. This is three and a half, four. The fact that they made it two and a half tells me all I need to know. Uh, if I was a betting man in this game, I'm taking the, the, the Saints just because of that line. Because the odds makers know something we don't know. Yeah. And plus, they one game behind in a divisional game. So the Saints, are, both of them are going to play for their lives. But if the Saints lose, they're out. The Bucs yeah, ain't agree. out. You see the difference? I agree. I agree. Yeah, I agree. 
So that's where I'm at with it. Okay, okay let's go to the next game. Let's go to Arrowhead. Uh, eight and seven Cincinnati Bengals versus the nine and six Kansas City Chiefs. The line is minus six and a half for the Kansas City Chiefs. Talk to me. Wow, the wheels have come off in Kansas City, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 this, so this was coming all year long. You know, those receivers cannot hold on to the ball for anything. Mahomes under pressure. That offensive line is starting to break down. You know, uh, uh, no running game. Isaiah Pacheco hurt again. I don't know if he's playing this weekend due to a concussion. No, um, he should be the, back in there. The, but, but the defense the defense has held them up. But, man, the Raiders did a number on them on Monday. They did a number on them. So Well, um, it was uh, the two turnovers, the fumble at the five-yard line, and the pick the, six was the difference the pick six, in the game. Seven seconds later, yeah. Yeah, that was so, the difference in the game. But, uh, the, 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 but that defense was harassing also uh, – uh, Patrick Mahomes. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was so Mahomes was under him. duress. He was under duress. Charles B and company. I, I, I think Kansas City gets back on track. I think they, 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 they win this, but uh, they, 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 they're, they're going to squeeze it out. They're not going to blow out the uh, Bengals. The Bengals have been playing good, even without Joe Burrow. Uh, Browning's been, been uh, taking care of the ball. Um, their thing is injuries also, but I still think that Kansas City wins this at home. Right, right. I'm going to say that the my boy T's team, Kansas City Chiefs, had hit rock bottom. When you got Mahomes so. yelling at a referee. Yeah. Then the next week you got Kelsey throwing his helmet with his girl upstairs in the booth where Andy V had to go holler at him. Yeah. They hit rock bottom. They're not accustomed to this style of playing. They're not used to this. And I think they're still a good enough team to come with some ass this week. I think they I think even so covered. I think they even covered six and a half. Now, if Joe Burrow was playing. I have a different perspective because yeah. Burrow knows how to play this against this defense. Yes, he, he does. Cuts does. Those, he cuts them up. Yeah, but I don't think uh, a Brownie's going to cut them up, and that's going to be the difference at home. I think KC wins at least by seven or more. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Let's go to Indianapolis in a very, very good, intriguing game as the seven and eight Las Vegas Raiders. Played an eight and seven coach. Now, both of them have to win, but the Raiders are out if they don't automatically. Yeah. Coach will still be mathematically alive. The line is minus three, three and a half for the coach. Talk to me. Coach are playing for the division if uh, the Jaguars lose out. So I think uh, the Colts are going to come out fired up. The Raiders are going to come out fired up, especially after Monday's game against the Chiefs. Um, this game is in, the, in, in um, Indianapolis. You're right. If the Raiders lose, they're done. If the Raiders win and the Chiefs lose out, the Raiders can win the division, make the playoffs. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> I, 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 Mathematic, I get, look at, <laughs> mathematically, they could do it, but it's not going to fucking could, happen. But I, I, I don't want to give a lot of false hope to Raider fans out there either. So, <laughs> Right, right. But um, this game means a lot. This is, this, this, for the Colts, they win, they stay alive for the division, and they stay alive for that final wild card spot. This is going to be a back and forth. I, I think you're going to see a lot of points. Pittman is coming back. I'm hope you're right. Because I gave out. I, I'm gonna give out the over on the show. So I hope you're <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, all right. So uh, Pittman's coming back uh, for for from a concussion for the coast. So that's going to help them offensively. Jonathan yeah. Taylor looks like he's healthy, but they got a good run game. Their defense is suspect. I like the Raiders' defense to harass them, but I still think the Colts win this. Yeah. I I think Minshew Magic does enough to get them by, but I don't know if they're going to cover the three and a half, but I think Minshew Magic does enough. But the Raiders, let me tell you something, they balling. I just yeah. think they bust they low last week in KC. Mm. And then not only that, you get like five days rest, so you don't, you don't really got yeah. your whole week, and then you're still on the road. People don't know yeah. how difficult that is. Yeah, very difficult, And then yeah. dumb smoking them tobaccos, hanging out, breaking night. Yeah. You know, I, I, this is they better they better be ready because if they're not ready, the coach are gonna run them out that building, bro. So I they agree. better be ready. Well, so one I, thing is, I'll say this: regardless of what happens with the Raiders, Antonio Pierce deserves that head coaching job. Yeah, but if he makes the playoffs, he locks it in. He might have locked it in by beating KC. That's huge. I think he. That's like did. That's like the, the. I think it's called the Red River Rival with Texas and Oklahoma. Oklahoma, and Texas, right? Yeah. Usually, yep, right. whoever wins that, like I remember when Charlie Strong was like three and ten, yeah. but he won that game, 
So that yeah. kept his job another year. Yeah. So yeah. I think. Well, it, Michigan, Ohio State, it doesn't matter what you do. You beat Ohio State, you beat Michigan, you're good. That's, that's what it. I'm saying. Michigan, so Ohio State, I that's think it. since he beat him in Arrowhead, that might be enough. That, uh, yeah. But it's going to get crazy if other people are available. It. Like if you got guys available like Harbaugh or let's say Belichick, I know he ain't yeah. going to go to the Raiders, but let's just say crying out loud, he's willing to go there. Then that's going to make it difficult for Pierce. Yeah. But I think I think if he gets in the playoffs, there's no question. I think he deserves it. In my turn, I think he does deserve it. I think he did a good enough job to get no, me that too. back in it. But it's what Davis thinks. It's yeah. not what you think or I no, think. No, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, I understand. All right, let's yeah, leave it there. Let's go to the last game. 11-4 and four, Miami Dolphins. This is going to be very intriguing. 12-3 wow. and three, Baltimore Ravens. The line is three and a half for the Raven. My understanding is Waddle is out of the game. Yeah, no yeah. Waddle. Ankle. Ankle, talk yeah. to me. Talk to me. This is easily. This is right here. The the. This is right here. Home field advantage in the AFC. This is the game. This is going to decide who gets the number one seed. They're going to Baltimore. Miami is not a cold weather team. We know that. And if the weather is in bad conditions, Miami is in trouble. Jalen, they're already behind the eight ball with Jalen Waddle out. So, you know, Tyreek Hill is going to get double, tripled. Um, I don't trust Miami on the road, especially against a, 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 a team like Baltimore who just kicked San Francisco's ass all over the field in San Francisco on Monday night. I like Lamar. I, I, I think I, – I'll tell you the truth. This is going to be a good game, high scoring, but I think uh, Baltimore laid, lays the smackdown on, again on them like they did in San Francisco to the Niners. I, 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 that's the problem I got. Uh, I took Baltimore that day with the points. I didn't think they were going to win. But a lot of people thought San Francisco was going to smack them. The same talk yeah. I'm having this week about Baltimore. If you remember last year, it could have been two years ago last year, Tag Viola number down 28 points at Baltimore, came back and beat them. They outscored them in the second half, something like 35 to like seven. I'm not saying okay. that's going to happen again, but what I am saying is that he was flinging that rock out there like no tomorrow. So Baltimore, I'm hoping that Baltimore got a circle around the calendar with that game because I need Baltimore to make it to the conference finals. I got to bet that if they make it yeah. to the Super Bowl, not win, just make it, make it. cash okay. out. But this game here is real funny. The line is low. No waddle. I think it should have went up more. It didn't. This game smells, so I'm not touching this game. If I had to, if I had to give something on this game, I'll probably go with the over. I'll say there'd be a lot of points. I, I think there'll be a lot of points, but I think Baltimore finds a way to win it at the end, pull it away. Listen, I, 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 Lamar Jackson to me right now, between it's, it's, this is going to decide the MVP between him and Tyreek Hill. I, I just don't – this is a much better team than, than what Tua beat the last time they played. So uh, I, I, I don't trust Miami. I think if the weather's bad, Miami's in a lot of trouble. Okay, I, I don't want to Baltimore, go to – Baltimore wants a street fight in this. That's what it is. Okay, I don't, I don't want to go into the last game. I just want you to pick a winner because we're going to the college playoffs. Okay. And I got to do my free picks. No problem. Uh, Pittsburgh at Seattle. This game should be very intriguing. Uh, the line is minus three and a half for the sea chickens. Who you got? They're playing at <laughs> Seattle at the 12th. They're at Seattle. Uh, they're, these are two desperate teams going, but I, I, I like Pittsburgh's defense a lot better. Uh, I, I, think, uh, I think Pittsburgh pulls this one out by the skin of their teeth. Yeah, I think they cover. I'm not going to go as far as winning, but if Mike Tomlin wants to continue that win streak, he wants to win this because yeah. if he wins this game, he secures a winning record. Okay. okay, nine and seven, he can only go nine and eight. Yeah. If he loses this game, he got one more game left. They lose that one more game and will have his first losing season ever. And that's one more game against Baltimore. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so, so depending <laughs> how bad Baltimore needs that game, if they clinch, they probably won't need that game. Yeah. But if Baltimore loses this week, Pittsburgh better win because they're not going to beat Baltimore next week. I agree. Baltimore, it's a revenge game. Pittsburgh beat them the first time out. Keep that in mind. I agree. I okay, agree. let's go to the college football playoffs. Big Monday, two games on Monday. Everybody's waiting for this. These bowl games are getting me sick. You, <laughs> it, it, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to handicap these bowl games 
with all these uh, tr transfer portals. Yeah. yeah, it is. You understand it me? Is. Yeah, it's understand. one thing if, you know, before you probably have the quarterback out because he's going to the NFL. Yeah. You can still handicap that to a certain degree. But when you got about six guys, defensive guys you never really heard of, because, you know, I don't know the names in college like I know in the NFL. Yeah, exactly. You understand me? I mean, so it's almost impossible, but these games here, everybody's playing except the guys that are injured. Except the guys that matter, really. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. so we're going to start with the first game. 12-1 and one Alabama Crimson Tide versus the 13-0 and 0 Michigan Wolverines, and the line is minus one and a half for Michigan. Talk to me. This is going to be a defensive struggle. Um, mm. Alabama, Nick Saban bitched his way in, whatever. I don't care. I can't stand the guy. But anyway, Alabama, to me, is the more complete team. Jalen mm. Milrow has come a long way since that game against Texas that they Facts. lost. Um, Heisman Trophy candidate, along with J.J. McCarthy in, in Michigan. I think Alabama is going to run this ball. They're going to run this ball and tie Michigan's defense out with the big offensive line that they have. Uh, and then and later on in the game, I think this play action with Jalen Milrow, he's going to get his feet going. So I think Alabama, again, is going to win this. I think they're going to go to the chip. Uh, Jim Harbaugh and, and Michigan, they're not going to be able to they, – they're not going to be able, able to keep up offensively with this Alabama team. Their defense is going to get worn out at the end. Well, this is my prediction real quick. Uh, Michigan ain't see a team like this. Last time they seen a team like this was the Georgia Bulldogs, and you know what happened. Yeah. But I think Michigan's a lot better. McCarthy's better. I think Harbaugh's coaching better. Um, I, I disagree with you. I think Bama's going to flip-flop the throw with the run. I think okay. Michigan is going to run, run, run. But this is the problem. I know why they're going to do that, because Bama got the best corners in the game. And you don't want to be in shock and just throwing it to those two best corners. You see how they yeah. stopped the Georgia. And let me tell you something about Alabama. They don't need to rush more than four. This no, they don't. makes them so difficult. Day four could take on five blockers and put pressure. Okay. And now you got an extra <clears throat> man on defense with the two best corners. That's what makes it incredible to beat these guys. So you're going to have to see a lot of, like, flanker reverses, screens. Yeah. Any, you check know, the downs. quick, the, the quick check down, you know, when they yeah. blitz the quick check down to the receiver with the two blockers, Michigan has to dictate this game if they're going to win. Yeah. If it's something where Bama's dictating, they're going to get run out of the building. I don't know if Crum is going to do enough. That little guy against them huge defenders. They might have to run them wide, and maybe he's going to have to beat them wide. But like I said, them corners are so incredible, X, and they hit hard. So when they, they see them running, they yo, dog, they like linebackers, them corners, dog. Alabama has speed also. Michigan is going to have to play a perfect game. Yeah, I agree. A perfect game to win this game, just like the New England Patriots did against the Rams when they were 16-point mm -hmm. underdog with Tom Brady. In yeah. the Super Bowl against the best team on turf. New England played a perfect game. Yeah, and they Michigan did. I remember that. can do that. And, of course, create some turnovers off Milro, they could win this game. And yeah, I, all, I all, all the way to today, I was feeling Bama because I think they're the better team. I think the committee fucked up. Not that the committee fucked up because I think they made the right decision, but a lot of people don't like the decision they made, including you. Yeah. I don't think... I feel like I said my video. I don't want to get into it too much. You don't put a team that's missing their best QB and put your third quarterback, you know, in the top four. I, do they deserve it? Yes, but all because they deserve it doesn't mean you can't remove them out because they're missing their top quarterback. X X. I don't want to see them make it and then get blown out forty-eight to three because that's okay. yeah, third, that third quarterback. That, yeah. That's not right now. They're twenty-one point underdogs against Georgia. I think they're gonna. Cover the spread. I might bet them, so. but I'm just saying. You see, you see what I'm saying? I Look understand what spread. you're saying. I, I understand what you're saying. I you know what I mean? I, I, me as yeah. a fan, I want the best quality team out there with yeah, their I best agree. players. I agree. I you agree. feel me? I agree. I agree. Yeah, that's like that's like the LA Lakers making to the chip 
but LeBron's not playing. <laughs> that changes everything, dog. Like, no, for real, it changes everything. But anyway, gun in my head, and I'm like, I like the under. Okay. I think it stays under the 45 points. I, I, it's hard for me to pick a side. I'm breaking my head. If I'm correct, if Michigan can get some first downs running the ball, you're going to see they're going to be melting the clock every fucking – every time. They're not going to – you know how you call hype with 20 seconds? They're going to yeah. call hype with five seconds on every play because they're going to have – they yeah. have to, bro. They got to take the ball and yeah, try yeah. to tie it. I, I, I agree. I agree. Michigan has to keep the ball away from – they got to keep that Alabama defense on the field as much as they can. Have to, dog, as much as possible. But I, I, I still think Alabama pulls this out. Okay, I got you. Let's go to game two. 12 and 1 Texas Longhorns versus the 12 and 1 Washington Huskies. Line is minus four and a half for the Longhorns. I got to be super duper quick. X, I'm a little late, but let's try to knock this out so I can get my free plays. This game has no defense in it. It's going to be a high scoring game. Uh, I like, listen, I, I, I think Washington had a great year. Michael Penix, that kid is, is a good player, but overall, I think Texas is the better team. I think Texas is hungry. They're determined. I, I, I think Texas pulls this out by the skin of their teeth. I think this is going to be a back and forth up, until the final seconds of the game. I agree with you. I, I didn't like the line. I would have probably made the line like two or three. But yeah. they know, you know, they, they professional. They made it four and a half. That really got me wondering. But it shouldn't have had me wonder too much because Oregon was a 10-point favorite against Washington. Yeah, and Washington they basically... Were. Whip they ass. They handled Oregon them, yeah. Oregon scored late to make it close, but that wasn't really as close as the score indicated. No, of course not. Yeah, yeah. No, but I think in them. this situation, I think the Longhorns prevailed. The only way Washington got a chance, I want to see that front line dominate like they did against Oregon. Yeah, that's going to be difficult. But the thing but is, yeah, Longhorns line is bigger than Oregon's line. Mm -hmm. They're not going to let them push them around, though. You can guarantee yeah. that. Yeah, they're gonna be I pushing agree. them back the same fucking way. Washington moved Oregon's line the whole game. There was they would Bo Nix had pressure the whole game. Yeah, he did. They're not he gonna have that pressure. kind of pressure against the lawn. And that no. guy could fling it, they could run it. Yeah, cool. Quinn you know, Ewers is good. Remember, remember, Texas beat Alabama. That's all they I gotta did. say. Now, so I, I will have to yet. agree with you. The Longhorns prevail, baby. X Men, yep. Happy New Year. Happy New words, Year, my brother. brother. Thank you for having me on. Um, we'll do this again next year in only you a couple of days, know. of course. But uh, listen, you and your family have a happy New Year. Be safe out there. Be careful. Much love, brother. Likewise, good work and uh, good work covering for MG Raider. He just said his Wi-Fi run, um, went out. So I, I'm juggling <laughs> if it's the Wi-Fi or he did a little bit of this. I'm juggling like the said, thought. My man's still celebrating, bro. He's still <laughs> celebrating. We're only a couple of days away from New Year's, brother. So there you go, let's get brother. the party and start it. But listen, we, we ain't losing <laughs> Thank you, brother. We hold it down. Bless up to you, your family, your son, your mother who just had birthdays. Happy New Year. We're rocking the New Thank Year, you, my brother. guy. Thank you. Have a good one. You and your X family. man you already snow, baby. Let's right, get it. brother. Okay. Yeah, man. This shit went so quick. I'm bugging out, man. Yeah, we're going to do the... Uh, we're going to do the giveaway real soon, but um, let me do the free picks and then. Yeah. Uh, last week, woo, all of us lost heartbreakers. We all went like one or two. No excuses. Let's hope we come back this week. Let me start real quick with B Rabbit's pick. He likes the Saints plus two and a half versus the Tampa Bay Bucks. If you smart, you buy to three. In case Tampa wins by a field goal, you get your money back, but you will have to probably put out. And next to ten dollars, like one ten, one twenty to win a hundred instead of one ten. Buy the Saints to three. He likes the Panthers, believe it or not, to cover the plus four, four and a half against Jacksonville, who look worse and worse every week. Sunshine is no, it, 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 it's no sunlight no more. It's dull. Sunshine ain't lighting it up like he was early. Everything is dull in Jacksonville. He likes the Panthers. And last, but he, and last but not least, he likes buying the Colts down at half a point, taking a minus three versus the Vegas Raiders. Now, let me go to my boy, Noah Parker, college football. He likes Ole Miss plus five versus Penn State tomorrow. Ole Miss. The second game, he likes Wyoming 
Wyoming minus three. If it's three and a half, you buy down the three versus Toledo. He likes Wyoming. And last but not least, he likes Wisconsin plus 10 versus the LSU Tigers. So those are his three picks, all college. B Rabbit got the NFL. I'm going to hit you with the NFL. I like the Denver Broncos buying a half a point, making a minus three with Jarrett Stidham. I think Stidham is going to present a spark in that team. The team's going to play a little harder for him because, like we said, they wasn't really feeling rushed like that from my understanding. I'm not in the locker room. I can only give you what I read up. I think they're going to go all out for Stidham. Quarterback in Auburn was really good in college. Quarterback with the Patriots was a backup. You know, he played some games, some good, some good, some not. But I think this is going to give him a spark. I like Denver minus three. Then I like, I got a two-team money line. I can't even believe I'm putting this team in there, but I'm just going to put them in there. I got Jacksonville money line because this is this is the playoffs for them. The eight and seven, they lose this. They might be out. They have to win this game. They might not cover it, but they have to win it. I got Jacksonville money line with the Rams money line. Now, the Rams was going to be tough, too, because I think the G-Man is going to give them everything they can handle. But Rams also, big game for them. G-Man better lose it if they want that top draft pick. You don't need to be showing off or showing out when you need a draft pick. This win means absolutely nothing for the Giants. Fucking play hard, go ahead, lay down, and go get that high draft pick. The two money lines play plus 105. So if you bet 100, you win 105. If you bet 1,000, you win 1,050. It's more than even money. Money line, Jaguars, and Rams. And last but not least, two-team six-point teaser. You got the uh, Kansas City Chiefs down two and a half. And then you got I got the Raiders over 36 and a half. Six-point teaser. Bring them down from 42 to 36 over. Bring the Chiefs down to six and a half down. They go your nine free plays out your sport. Now we're going to the giveaway. Good luck to everybody. We got three nine-win nine people. Autumn. Ghost and B4. If any of them win on the first spin, they're the champion. Even if it's somebody wins in the second one. The first spin, you're the champion. The second one will start round five. If they win in the second one, they're still a champion. So good luck to everybody. Let's get it. Let me put a little sounds on and we ready to go. That's it, my boy. All right, here we go. The world. I thought, I mean, three people got nine wins, and they both got multiple numbers on both slots. I thought for sure we were going to have a winner tonight. But you know what? We're going to have to do it in 2024. Round four continues. Salute to Chico. Salute to Keith Vega. Chico got eight. Vega got about six, seven. So it's even getting more of a dog race. I mean, it's getting crunched up to the point that somebody's going to have to win. Let's go to some of you today and we out of here. Uh, excuse me for Mark Guillory, folks. He said his Wi Fi was down. Uh, I'm going to have to believe him. I just hope he didn't, you know, he wasn't eating gumbo soup and zipping on that thing thing. But he said that Wi Fi was out. So I give him the benefit of the doubt. I know he wanted to rock. Uh, he loves doing the games of the week. He couldn't wait to do the playoffs. And, but X hold it down. X came in, did his thing, hold it down. We gave you all the breakdown, the leans. And then we gave you all the free picks. You spoke about the NBA top five team. We talked about Russell Wilson. We hit the NFL games of the week and, of course, the college football playoffs. And right here, three zip Ohio State in the third quarter between Missouri and Ohio State. These bowl games are so funny. The games that you think are under are flying over. And then this game, I thought there was going to be points. I didn't bet it, but I swore to God there were going to be points. And it's three zip in the third quarter. These shits are so unpredictable. But listen, guys, happy new year to everybody. Whether you family, a friend, a loved one, an enemy, or like a negative person, everybody gets the happy new year. Uh, as you get older, you learn that try to limit the grudges, uh, live life, you know what I mean, and just move on. Uh, you know, people are going to like you no matter what. This this world was made imperfect for a reason. You just got to keep doing what you're doing. And like I said on my message of the day, love, 
love your loved ones more. I said that like about a year ago, but I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna re bring it back. Stop chasing the people that are not loving you like you expect them to. Like I get, a, I have a problem with that, and I'm still trying to overcome that. But I, one thing I do do is I show the loved ones I love them, and I always tell them I love them. If I don't tell them, I show them. Continue to do that because at the end of the day, you you won't you won't set yourself up for failure when you got the marquee people that you know are gonna be there and been there. But you start depending on new people, you're gonna set yourself up for failure because they're not gonna show up, man. I'm telling you, I've been there, done that. Don't set yourself up for failure. Love the loved ones harder and fuck everybody else. And with that, Al York Sports 2024, Happy New Year, the raw truth. You know I'm coming back. No drinking and driving. Love you all. God bless y'all all. Be safe for the new year, man. Al York Sports.